So as of now, when we spoke about the law of conservation of mechanical energy, we said that the reason mechanical energy is conserved is because we're neglecting non-conservative forces such as friction and drag forces. But in fact, in many real cases, mechanical energy does not remain constant. And in fact, it decreases because of dissipated forces known as friction and drag forces. So dissipated forces are non-conservative forces such as friction and drag forces, air resistance, for example. And these forces act to decrease the mechanical energy of our system. And in fact, the reason a pendulum will not reach the same exact height on the other end is because air resistance or drag force acts on our pendulum on the object as we'll see in just a moment. So, before we discuss the law of conservation of energy, let's talk about internal energy. So what exactly is internal energy? Well, internal energy is the sum of all the different types of energy of the individual atoms and molecules compromising our object. So for example, if I examine this object on a sub-microscopic level, I'm going to see vibrating molecules and atoms. And the vibrational energies, the kinetic energies, potential energies, and every other type of energy, if I sum up that energy of the individual molecules and atoms compromising this marker, that will give me the internal energy of my marker. And in fact, what dissipated forces such as friction and drag force do is they usually increase the internal energy of the objects. So that's exactly why we have a decrease in mechanical energy because some of that mechanical energy is transformed into internal energy. So it increases the internal energy of our system. And in fact, what the law of conservation of energy states is that the total amount of energy, including the internal energy of our system, will be conserved. So the total energy remains constant. Energy can transform into one form or another, but the sum of all the energy remains unchanged. So let's suppose we have the following box and we push the box along a uh, tape uh, along a surface and that surface has friction on it. So we have friction forces, we have drag forces that come from the air molecules found in the air through which the box is traveling. So if we push the box, we give the box some kinetic energy and eventually that box will come to a stop. The reason the box comes to a stop is because the kinetic energy in the box is transformed into internal energy of the box and the table. So what happens is the box stops because all the kinetic energy has been transformed, has increased the internal energy of the system. So if we examine on a microscopic level the surface between the box and the table before and after, we find that afterwards the molecules and atoms are vibrating more vigorously because some of that kinetic energy of the macroscopic object has transformed into internal energy of the microscopic system, of the microscopic molecules and atoms compromising our two objects. So if we calculate, we get the following result. The, the initial kinetic energy and the initial potential energy of the system is equal to the sum of the final kinetic and final gravitational or potential energy of the system plus the change in our internal system. So some of this energy, in fact all of it, has gone into increasing the internal energy of the system. Now what about, let's say we take an object and we release the object from some height. The object will travel through air, it will hit air molecules and eventually it will come to the ground and will stay at the ground. So what is actually going on when we're not neglecting non-conservative forces? So what happens is our macroscopic object, the ball, is hitting these air molecules and it's pushing these air molecules away. So some of that kinetic energy stored in our object has transformed into internal energy of the air molecules. So the air molecules are now moving faster because they have more kinetic energy because of these collisions. 
So some of that macroscopic kinetic energy in the object has transformed into internal energy of the air molecules. And it, it has increased the speeds of the air molecules. Now at the end, the macroscopic object will hit the ground. And in fact, when it hits the ground, that kinetic energy is entirely transformed into increasing the internal energy of the ground and the object. So at the end, the object and the ground will be at a slightly higher temperature because it will have slightly higher internal energies. So the molecules in the air, the ball and the ground have more internal energy at the end because some of that gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy has gone into increasing the internal energy. So here we have the same exact formula. So the sum of our initial kinetic and gravitational potential energy is equal to the sum of the final kinetic and potential energy plus the change in our internal energy. And so we see that the entire sum of the total energy has been conserved. Now let's look at the final example. Why exactly does a pendulum stop? Uh, swinging. Well, if we take a pendulum and we let it go, eventually the, uh, the pendulum will stop swinging. And that's because of the collisions between the pendulum and the air molecules. As the pendulum swings back and forth, the pendulum, the object, is colliding with the air molecules. And so some of that gravitational potential and kinetic energy of the macroscopic object goes into increasing the internal energy of the, these molecules surrounding our uh, bob, our mass. And so eventually, all of that kinetic energy, all of that gravitational potential energy stored in the swinging pendulum will go into increasing the internal energy of the surrounding molecules and atoms as, as well as the internal energy of the object, the bob itself. So the pendulum comes to rest because drag forces created by the air molecules resist its motion and eventually it will come to a rest.